Unit 7, Section 1, the Pythagorean Theorem. Ancient Greek guy named Pythagoras discovered that inside of right triangles there is a pattern of sorts. And uh, it works pretty much every time, all the time, so it has become the Pythagorean Theorem. It is used to find the missing side of a right triangle. It only works on right triangles. The triangle has to have a 90 degree angle. Let's don't forget what right triangle means, right? It's got a 90 degree angle inside of it. The sides A and B, as you can see over here in our picture, right, are called the legs. And they are the small and the medium. Or the small and the small, or the medium and the medium, if that happens to be an isosceles right triangle, and the two legs are exactly the same number. Side C is called the hypot in use. The hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Hypot in use. Hypotenuse. Okay, that's side C. For any right triangle, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, we already talked about this a little bit when we did rectangles and squares and uh, those kinds of things because we had to find missing sides or missing diagonals and things like that. So we had to use the old A squared plus B squared equals C squared trick already. But now we're going to use it for sure. So, find the value of x, round each answer to the nearest tenth. That's important. We know where we're rounding now, to the nearest tenth. So, we're going to do that little wavy equal sign. Okay? So, small side A, medium side B, big side C. So, 8 squared plus 13 squared equals C squared. Or, in this instance, what we might want to call it is x squared, because we want to solve for x, right? So 8 squared is 64, plus 13 squared is 169, equals x squared. So 233 equals x squared. And so I'm going to square root, because don't forget, uh, oops, wrong button. the opposite of add is subtract, the opposite of multiply is divide, the opposite of square is square root. Okay, they undo each other, undo each other. So, opposite of square, square root. When we square root 233, let's look here. Let's see, square root 233. Oh, we get 15.26. I'm looking at the two. That's the number I'm rounding, so I check backwards one spot, and it's a six. Five and above, give it a shove. So, X is about 15.3. I swear it's a three, I promise. And that's what it takes. Identify, conquer, overcome. C is always opposite the 90. So this is my C. So that means this is A. And that's B. So 22 squared plus 27 squared equals X squared. 484 plus 729 equals X squared. 12, 13 equals x squared. So, square root. x is about. Let's plug her in. What do we need in there? 12, 13. 34.82. The 2 says stay. So, 30. Oop, I lost it already. 34.8. 34.8. Just like that. Give it a pause, try the next two. Let's see what you get. All right, here we go. This one is A now. This is B, that's C. C's opposite the 90. So now we've got X squared plus seven squared equals nine squared. So X squared plus 49 equals 81. Now we gotta do a little move. We gotta subtract the 49 before we square root. We want the x squared by itself first, then we can square root. 81 minus 49 is 32. 
square root. X is approximately, let's see. Now, before I do it in the calculator, I'm going to do it over here to the side. Because square root of 32, we did that square root practice. If I break that down, that's 4 times 8. That's 4 times 2. Ooh, I got an early pair. So 4 square roots of 2. So I could say that x squared, instead of approximately, I could actually say x equals 4 square roots of 2. That's exactly. But they want us to round. So I'm going to go 4 square root 2. Where's my square root button? And that's 5.65. The 5 shoves the 6 up to 7. So x is approximately 5.7. Shoot. Now, if you notice, and if you'll remember, whoop, okay, in our right triangle, the biggest side is across from the 90, right? So this is big. But there's going to be a small and a medium. Now, A and B can be switched on what they're called. B could be the small, A could be the medium. But unless it's isosceles, you're going to have one of each size, small, medium, and, well, big or large. So if we look at 7 and 9 and x, if 9 is the biggest, 7 looks like it's the longest side. So a should be smaller. The x should be smaller than 7. 5.7 is. So that's also another clue that we're on the right track. All right, cross from the 90. That's our c. So this one's a, that one's b, or this one's b, that one's a. It doesn't matter when they're on the same side x squared plus 19.1 squared equals 30.5 squared. So x squared plus 364.81 equals 930.25. Subtract 364.81. Subtract 364.81. x squared equals 565.81. 4, 4, square root, and we get approximately, what's the square root of, give it to me again, 565.44, 565.44, 23.77, the 7 shoves the 7 to 8, so 23.8, 23.8, it was the medium sized side. Now we got some weird looking things. It's not just a right triangle with three sides on it. Number five is an isosceles triangle. We know this side. We know this side's 24. We know that side's 22, but they want to know this thing in the middle. And what that thing in the middle does, uh, that is called the height of the triangle. Okay. And it always forms a 90 degree angle, plus they marked it. So that means that this little side is 11 because I know that that is cutting that triangle in half. That's what the height of a triangle does, okay? Sometimes known as the altitude of the triangle, okay? So that side's 11, that side's 24. We want to know x. So we got x squared plus 11 squared equals 24 squared. x squared plus 121 equals, let's see, what's 24 squared? 570. 6 minus 121, x squared equals 455, square root. The nice thing about doing this rounding to the nearest tenth is we could just do the calculator. We don't have to worry about trying to figure out, you know, what goes into 455. I mean, 5 does, and then we'd keep going from there. I mean, let's do it as a practice. Let's see, 455 is 5 times what? So 455 divided by 5 is 91. 9 plus 1. Man, I don't know what goes into 91. Let's see. Uh, na, 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 Let's see. If I do 91 divided by x, and then I go, dink, chart me. Um, does 3 go? No. Does 4 go? No. 5? No. 6? No. 7? 7 goes 13 times. Both 7 and 13 are prime. So we actually don't get any pairs, and we primed our way out. 
So that means the square root of 455 is just the square root of 455. It doesn't go anywhere. But if you ever want to know what numbers go into a number, put that number on top. So like if we did 84 and then divide it by a variable, you can do this in a TI-84 calculator. And then on Desmos, if you do the settings wheel and you do the little chart, it gives you a chart of values. So if I plugged in X, so if I plugged in a zero under 84, it's undefined because you can't divide by zero. But if I divide 84 by one, it's 84. If I divide it by 2, it's 42. If I divide it by 3, it's 28. If I divide it by 4, it's 21. And I can, well, that's not a, 5 doesn't go into it, but 6 does, 7 does, 8 doesn't, 9 doesn't, 10 doesn't, 11 doesn't, 12 does, and we're back to 6. We've already done 6, so that's all the ones that we need. And so you can make a little chart of all of the values. You can, you can see the factors of a large number if you need to. So we're going to do square root, square root, 455, 21.33. The 3 stays the 3, so that is approximately 21.33. So that triangle is about 21.33 whatever's high. How many whatever's it is. Okay. So we want to know about this x. Man. That's tough, because it's not a triangle. But, check it out. Boop, 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 boop. Now I have a triangle with a right angle in it. I know because I just made a parallel line. So I know it cuts off at 90 degrees. Now, if this side's five and the whole thing's 18, that makes this side 13. And if I know what this is, I know what X is because they're exactly the same piece. So I'm gonna do x squared plus 13 squared equals 16 squared. And you're like, whoa, Mr. Maggot, I don't know what's going on here. All we did is we turned the trapezoid into a triangle by dividing it into two different shapes. I divided it into a triangle shape, and I divided it into a rectangle shape. Okay, so I'm just going to find that piece. The reason I got 13 is the whole way is 18. Take off the 5 from the piece of the trapezoid. That gives you 13 left for the triangle part. So x squared plus 169 equals 256. Let's subtract 169 both sides. x squared equals 87. Square root. And we get approximately 87 in there. 9.32. The three the two stays the three, so about 9.3 is what we're looking at there. Okay, number seven, we need x all the way across. And what we don't know is, is that a right angle or not? We're not sure. So we can't use the 14 and the 29. But what we do know is this is a right angle, and that is a right angle. And we know that that's 12, and that's 14. And so this could be a. And if the 12 is a, then this one could be b, and x equals a. A plus B. So if I find A and I find B, I can put them together for X. So A squared plus 12 squared equals 14 squared. A squared plus 144 equals 196. Subtract 144. A squared equals 52. Square root. And A is almost, let's put a 52 in there. 7.21, the 1 stays the 2, so about 7.2. Now let's do b squared. Plus 12 squared equals 29 squared. b squared plus 144 equals, what's 29 squared? 841. Subtract 144. b squared equals... 697 square root b is approximately wow 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 what do we let's see what was the number again 697 26.40 the zero stays the four so about 26.4 26.4 so then we could say x equals 7.2 plus 26.4 so x is if we add 0.2, it's going to be 0.6, and if we add 7 to 26, 
four more goes to 30, three more makes it 33. So X is about 33.6. Boosh. All right, we got a couple of thinker stinkers right here. Try eight and nine. Go ahead and give them a try on your own. Pause it, come back. Let's see how they go. Okay. Well, we just need to label it something, right? So let's call this one B. Because if we find B, we can then use it to help us find A, which is the X. So we have to do one triangle in order to solve the other triangle. So I'm going to do 10 plus squared plus B squared equals 25 squared. And then eventually I'm going to do X squared plus something squared equals 28 squared. But i got to figure out what that something is. So 100 plus B squared equals uh, 625, if I remember correctly, minus 100. B squared equals 525 square root. B is almost, let's plug in a 525 in there, 525. 22.91, the 1 stays the 9, so 22.9. Now, we're getting into a weird territory here where we've rounded once and we're going to round again and we're double rounding. But that's okay. We'll go with it for now. 22.9. X squared plus, what is 22.9 squared? 524.41. 524.41 equals 28 squared, which is 784. I have a chart next to me. That's how I know all these bad boys. I'm just looking. Uh, minus 524.41 both sides. And x squared equals, look at that math, 259.59 square root. x is approximately. So we're going to do 259.59. One, uh, 16.11, the 1 stays the 1, so we're going to say 16.1. Number nine, trapezoid, isosceles trapezoid. They even drew the little lines on there for you, which is very nice, very nice. We want to know how tall is that junker? Well, if the whole bottom way is 40 and this much is 26, and it's isosceles, so these are going to be the same distance. Let's see, 40 minus 26, borrow four. So these guys are 14. And I'm just looking for x. So 14 squared plus x squared equals 20 squared. Oh, good question. Are they 14? Let's look back. As I just looked at my key, as you should be doing as you do your work, check the key, make sure you're doing it right. And I looked, and I was like, ooh, that's not the right answer. Let's look what's happening. So if I do 14 plus 26, that makes 40, and then I got another 14 on there. So what I needed to do was divide that by 2, which is 7. So these, errantly, are not 14. These are 7 each. 14 total for the two pieces, but two pieces make 7 each. So instead of 14 squared, I need 7 squared, which is 49 plus x squared equals 400 minus 49. x squared equals 231 square root. So x is approximately, let's see, I don't need that one. What am I square rooting? 231, 231. 15.19, the 9 shoves the 1 up, so it's 15.2 about. Okay. Now, applications. As we get into applications, what we're talking about is word problems, real-world situational things that you could actually apply the math that you are forced to learn. Uh, into real-world situations, okay? So here we go. Draw a picture and solve the missing side. A roofer, okay, so we need a house. Right? Here's my front door. My window. A roofer leaned a 16-foot ladder against a house. 16 feet. If the base of the ladder is 5 feet from the house, 5 feet, 
How high up the house does the ladder reach? I don't know. There's our 90. So x squared plus 5 squared equals 16 squared minus, uh, I can't minus yet. What a goober. x squared plus 25 equals uh, 16 squared. Check my chart. 256 minus 25. x squared equals... Boy, did I use the chart wrong. This is where the 231 comes in. I'm sure you're screaming back up here at this one. Master Maga, that was not 231. So let's do that again. 400, uh, not you, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, psh, 500 minus 49, 351. Whoa, what's happening? Oh, I'm still on the eraser. 351. And then we want to square root 351. 18.73. So let's change that to 18.73. I just looked at the wrong problem. That's all that was. Okay, back over here. 231 is the right thing because let's check just to make sure that 256 minus 25 is 231. We are good. So we're going to square root 231, and it is 15.19. The 9 shoves that up, so approximately 15.2 feet. Now, what we should do in this case is put the units on there. It is 15.2 feet. Okay. Kurt is building a rectangular deck. Okay, so I need a rectangle. Oh, that's very bad. 90, 90, 90. 90, mark, 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 mark. It's a rectangle, I know it, because opposite sides are congruent and parallel, and all the corners are 90 degrees. If the dimensions of the deck are 10 feet by 23 feet, 10 feet by 23 feet, and this is 23, and that is 10. What is the length of the diagonal of the deck? We want to know this part right here. So this is going to be my C squared. So 10 squared plus 23 squared equals C squared. I know it's going to be bigger than 23 because it has to be the biggest side. 100 plus, let's look at 23 squared. 529 equals C squared. 629 equals C squared. Square root. C is almost. Let's get in there. 629. 25.07, the 7 shoves the 0 up, so 25.1, and it's bigger than 23, so that makes sense. Ooh, you know what I forgot? Foots. 25.1 feet. Don't forget your feet. 12 and 13, give it a pause, give it a try, draw your picture. It doesn't matter how weird it is. Look. Oh, doot, doot. That's my deer. It's also my giraffe and my dog and my everything else. doesn't matter how silly your picture looks as long as you know what your picture means. So give it a try. Here we go. Ashley jogged 3.4 miles east. In case you're wondering, never eat soggy waffles. She went east 3.4 miles. Then she went south at a 90 degree angle. 5.7 miles. How far is she from her starting point? And what we would say is as the bird flies. Because what she did is she traveled 3.4 miles and 5.7 miles. And if you add those together, uh, you get 4.1 and 9.1. But we want to know, like if she had started at her house and now she's here. Long hair. I see her with long hair. Flowing when she runs, not in a ponytail. So it gets all knotted up. If she could just fly back to her house straight, how far is it? So 3.4 squared plus 5.7 squared equals C squared. 3.4 squared is 11.56. 5.7 squared is 32.49 and C squared. If I add those together, I get 44.05 square root. Always the opposite of square. So x is almost, look at those, really squiggly. Okay, very good. Let's see, 44.05. 44.05. 6.63, the 3 stays, so she's about 6.6 6 
miles. So if she could travel diagonally, let's say she goes down like Northwest Expressway or something like that, 6.6 .6 miles, she'd be back to her house very quickly instead of turning around and going back the 9.1 miles she's already run. So save her a little bit of time, a little bit of distance. 13, a 31 foot support wire is attached from the top of a 25 foot telephone pole. Okay, so telephone pole, those kind of look like this. To the top, there's a wire going down. Okay, 31 foot, 25, that's a very bad five. One more undo, 25 foot tall telephone pole. How far from the base, hopefully the pole isn't leaning like all of ours are after our ice storm, but how far from the base of the pole does the wire meet the ground? So we want to know B from here to there. So 25 squared plus B squared equals 31 squared. 625 plus B squared equals 961. Subtract that 625. That's a 2, I promise. B squared equals 336. And we're going to square root. That's an even one. Let's practice our square rooting, 336. Let's see if we can get an exact answer. Uh, it divides by 2, so let's look. 336 divided by 2 is 168. That will also divide by 2, because it's even, is 80. Four. That will also divide by 2, which is 42, which will also divide by 2, which is 21. Oop, hello. Go back. It's 21, and 21 divides into 3 and 7. Break, 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 break. I got two twos. I got two twos. I got a 3. I got a 7. So 2 comes out. 2 comes out. 3 and 7 stay in. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 7 is 21. So... Four square roots of 21. Four square root 21. 18.33. The three stays the three, so it's about 18.3 feet away from the pole. That's Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, only if it's a right triangle. It's time to practice.